Hello everyone, Comrade Kelly here. Welcome to a brand new series where I will be discussing cultural references that can be seen uh, in the Toho franchise. So Zune is well known for incorporating folklores or legends into his games. And a lot of this go over people's head, especially those in the West. So I want to explain these things more in detail uh, for those unfamiliar with it. And to start off with this series, we will be taking a look at uh, Eiki Shiki Yamashanatu and find out where Zun gets her inspiration from. If such a place like hell exists, then Eiki will be the one to judge you for all the horrible NPR hand type you fap to in your lifetime. She's one of the Yamas of Hell who will judge the dead on the things they have done during their lifetime. She will determine whether one will enter heaven, hell, or even reincarnation depending on the things they have done during their lifetime. So she's not a person you really wanna mess with. Now let's start off with her name. The name Eiki in Japanese means reflection projection, or casting princess, while Shiki in Japanese means the four seasons. Now moving on to our title, uh, Yamashanatu, which has a more uh, interesting story to it. The word uh, Yamashanatu is a combination of the word Yama and Shanatu. The Yama Zun is referencing here comes from East Asian and Buddhist mythology. He is also sometimes known as the King of Hell, King Yan, or Yan Luo. Similar to Eiki, the Yama is a Tamo Polo whose job is to judge the dead and preside over hell. This Buddhist Yama is based on the Hindu Yama from the Vedas. Although inspired, the Buddhist Yama has deviated into something quite different from the Hindu counterpart as it spread across East Asian countries such as China, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, and more. There are many different versions of the Yama, uh, some of you probably already can tell. Uh, depending on which part of the world you're from. Uh, but for today, we'll be talking about the Yama in Chinese and Japanese mythology uh, to try to, you know, not make this video way too long than it already is. In Chinese mythology, he is known as King Yan or Yan Wang. He is the god of death and the ruler of hell. Yan is usually portrayed as a large man with a scowling red face, bulging eyes, and has a long beard. He wears traditional robes and a judge's cap or a crown, which bears the character Wang, which translates to king. Thankfully, the only thing Eiki has its similarity is the traditional robe and to some extent the judge's cap. Moving back to Yan Wang, he resides in Ti Yi, which is basically hell in Chinese mythology to simplify it. And unlike in Christianity, when a soul is sent to hell to be punished, they are not sent there for eternity. Rather, it is only a temporary thing, and depending on your sin, uh, the time spent there can vary. It is his job to determine if a soul is sent to heaven or hell. Virtuous souls were sent to live in heaven for a certain amount of time before returning to earth as a human. The same thing could be said about hell, except if you're going to be suffering for quite a bit uh, before you return to Earth. It is also his job to determine what type of punishment a sinner gets. I want to talk more about the types of punishment you can get in Ti Yi, but I decide to make a separate video on that in the future as they can get pretty horrific, and I'm not sure if my viewers really want to hear about it. Moving back to the Yama, now that we know more about the Yen Wang, it is time to familiarize ourselves with its Japanese counterpart. So in Japan, they call him Enma, and like the Chinese counterpart, he is the god of hell who judges the sin of those who passed away. According to Japanese mythology, Enma was the first person in this world to die, and as a result, he went to paradise. Or in Japanese mythology, they call it uh, Gokuraku Kyoto. Living here, his job was to look after the dead, but as time passes, people began to grow scared of him. Eventually, his job changed from looking over the dead to judging whether someone goes to heaven or hell. So again, not much different uh, from its uh, Chinese counterpart. So in Japan, there's a famous story where Enma pulls someone's tongue out because he was caught and lying to him. And Japanese parents would use this story to scare their kids from ever lying. And you know, the saying would usually go like this. If you tell a lie, 
Enma will pull out your tongue. I wouldn't be too surprised if Aki does a bit of tongue pulling behind the scene, as she looks like the type of character to do such a thing. As I've mentioned earlier, there are many more different versions and interpretations of this myth. This last version I want to cover has the Yangma seen as a title and not a singular person, and that there are actually 10 different Yamas in hell. Uh, in this version, Yan Luo, the guy we've been discussing so far, was demoted to the fifth king of hell because he was too lenient with his punishment. This version is surprisingly pretty popular uh, in parts of Japan and China, and it's probably the version Zun uses, uh, as it is implied that there is more than one Yama in the Toho universe. But for now, Eiki is the only known Yama to us, so hopefully, we might see more Yamas as potential characters in the future Toho games if Zun decide to make one more uh, about Hell. Now that you guys are more familiar with what a Yama is, it is time to discuss the other word in her title, which is Shanatu. Shanatu, or more commonly known in China, Shangtu, is located in Inner Mongolia, Northern China, and was first made the capital of the Yan Dynasty by Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, but was later made into the summer capital when Kublai decided to move his capital instead to Tatu, modern-day Beijing, which is also the current capital of the People's Republic of China. Now, why did Kublai decide to move his capital? Well, during his time, the Mongol Empire was divided into four dynasties, one of them being the Yan Dynasty, which the emperor was uh, Kublai Khan. He had an older brother called Mongke, who was the last officially elected Khan of the Mongols. He made Kublai responsible for the northern part of China during his tenure. Yet after Mongke's unexpected death in a battle, Kublai declared himself Khan and moved further south into China. So, most of the Yin dynasty was in China rather than in Central Asia, so it made sense for him to move his capital closer to this region. The weather there was also milder compared to Central Asia, and another explanation for why he moved his capital would probably be to isolate himself from potential threats. His self-declaration of being a Khan did not sit well with a lot of his siblings, so moving the capital was also a safety measure. Shanatu was popularized to the Western world thanks to the works of Marco Polo in his books Travel from 1298. It would receive another boost in the popular imagination when it was made the subject of poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. In the poem, Kubla, Khan, or a vision in a dream, a fragment. Shanatu was described as a pleasure known for Kubla Khan, and similar to its real-life counterpart, it was described as the Summer Palace. It is said that Coleridge wrote this poem based on a dream he had which he was high on opium at the time. Eki's appearance, from what I could gather, is loosely based around most Enma portraits or statues you will find around Japan. He is usually seen wearing a Chinese Song Dynasty outfit. So why a Chinese Song Dynasty outfit? I'm not really too sure why, but that's how Enma is usually depicted in Japanese mythology. Now that we've discussed most of the things you need to know about Eiki, let us now move on to the last part of the video, which is the two items she's known to carry around. One is the Rod of Remorse, and the other is the Cleanse Crystal Mirror. The Rod of Remorse, or in Japanese the Kaigo Nobo, is a rod that every Yama will carry around with them. A Yama will write down the nature of one sin on the rod, the worse the sin, the heavier the rod becomes. Those who did many wrong things are beaten many times with the equal proportion to their sins. The person in question will be beaten up until they repent. Uh, this stick is based on the real life counterpart, the shaku or hu in Chinese, and it is a ritual tablet or scepter that has its own origin in China. The hu was used at ancient Chinese courts for taking down notes by officials and is usually made in bamboo. 
It also became a tradition for officials to shield their mouths with the Hu when talking to the emperor. Aside from this, the Hu is also used as a religious instrument in Taoism and Shintoism, and King Yama is often depicting bearing the Hu, which is where Zun took his inspiration from. It is a mirror made of crystal used by the Yama to look into people's past. She's able to see all their past deeds. Everything they've done in the past will be shown in the mirror and thus there is no privacy. Every little detail may be exposed so that they can make a fair judgment. So there's an exact identical mirror in Buddhist mythology in which Enma also uses it to look into uh, people's past and judge their death for it. There are several images online where you can see uh, Enma using this mirror and for some reason it's always an image of a woman or most of them are. So I'm not sure if there's a story behind this because you know Enma kind of looks like a pervert in most of these images. And there you have it, uh, the cultural references that inspire the character Eiki Shiki. If you like this kind of video, please leave a like. And if I miss anything, please feel free to join my Discord or you know comment down below. And we could discuss this kind of things. And maybe I could use this for uh, future videos. Like I could make a part two to this video if I miss like a huge thing, right? Like a follow-up video. So yeah, uh, that's all I have to really say. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!